Hi, we're gonna go ahead and do lesson three, three pop quiz. Now, some classes we actually took the quiz, so take a second. If you had to take a pop quiz and you couldn't even see the questions, make some guesses. So I don't know, maybe you'd guess. Uh, maybe you're like, oh, I'm Christmas tree. I wanna make a nice little pattern. Done. That's a really good quiz. Does that make sense? So you're like, okay, well, what's my chances of getting it right? We hope you're ready. The quiz consists of my five questions and you don't even know the answers or the questions. So let's check if this pattern would have gleaned any answers. So depending on whatever you answered, let's see what the answers are. Well, I mean, you didn't even know, but this was the answers I decided were true. So this one is wrong, wrong, wrong. Ooh, this one I got right. And this one I got right. So this was a common answer in one of my classes, a common outcome. Um, just by guessing, I got two right and three wrong. Okay, so bubble in the answers and then write number correct. So for me, I got two right. Okay, so this number is going to be different depending on what you wrote down. Now, we using your notes from last time, is this a binomial setting? So this is going to stand for B-I-N-S. Okay, so I would say this is binomial because a success is getting it right. And either I get it right or failure is I get it wrong and there's nothing in between. Okay, so that's binomial. Is it independent? Well, in this setting, I think it is because each question... If I got this one right, that's not helping me get the second one right. Each one is independent, separate from the one to the next. In. In here was five. I had five chances to get it right. So it doesn't kind of feel like binomial, but this is a way I could look at binomial. And then S. What's my probability of success? So my probability of success should be 0.25 or 1 in 4 because I had four choices or chances to guess right. Awesome. So it says calculate the probability of getting exactly two right. So what we went over in class is that should be the binomial PDF um, of, and then let's use this calculator. So some classes got a chance to use the calculator, some didn't, but let's use it now. So I go to menu, probabilities, distribution, Scroll all the way down, and there it is, binomial PDF. So the number of trials, I had five trials. A quarter of the time, I'll be successful. And I want to know, what's my chances of getting exactly two right, which is exactly what happened there. Okay. So to write it out on my paper, I write binomial PDF, 5 comma, 0.25 comma, 2. And my answer is about 26% of the time, if you ran a long run frequency, about 26% of the time, people would get two out of these five right just by guessing. So that's when a kid says, oh, well, I did pretty good. I got two right. I don't feel great as a teacher, to be honest, because I know there's a pretty good chance of you guessing two right by purely guessing. And that's why I'm sad when you guess now, sometimes we guess with a knowledge, with a little bit of knowledge. So maybe our choice chance would go up. But because the questions were totally hidden, the only way to get it right would be to just get it right by purely guessing. Okay, now let's fill in the table. And again, I showed you last time how to do it by hand. You can find an online calculator, Google the word binomial PDF calculator, and you can pull one up too. Okay, give it a try. So now I'm going to do the same thing, and I've already calculated this number here. So I'm going to speed this along. I'm going to do the same thing for the other numbers, and the only thing I change is when I go to the menu, probability, distribution, binomial PDF, I'm just going to change my X values. So same thing, five tries, 25% chance of guessing right, 
but what if I got none right? So two kids in my eighth period got none right at all. Well, that's probably equally as likely, pretty close to equally as likely. So we had a chance of 0.237 of getting absolutely none correct by purely guessing. Let's fill in the rest of the table um, using the same method. Now I had one student just try to be funny and say, oh, I guessed all five right. And so you could see why I would have cause for pause because that's incredibly rare. You'd get all five right by purely guessing. I would have, there'd be a much better chance that you cheated and maybe somehow looked at, somehow looked at what I wrote down ahead of time. Okay. So now, how can I find the mean of this distribution? And remember, that's our expected value. So this times this, plus 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 this times this. Times this. Let's do it. So the mean mu of our x values is the summation of all of our specific x values times the probability of that x value. And then we want to add them all up. So this times this plus this times this, yada, yada, yada. So there's a little bit of rounding error, but um, you should get close to a number, 1.25. And we ask ourselves, does that make sense? We have to ask ourselves that. Is that what we expected of people? And I think the answer would be yes. Yeah. By purely guessing, most people are either going to get one right, maybe two, maybe none. This is going to be the most common outcome, and these are the rarer outcomes. So in my eighth period class, nobody got more than three right, but it is possible. So most people either got two, one, or none right. Okay, so can we also find and interpret the standard deviation? Well, I already said, I think it's one. I think a typical person got about one right, maybe a little more than one right, plus or minus one. But let's calculate that. And now we actually have a formula for this since we have a probability binomial distribution. So the formula goes like this. It's n times the number of times times the probability of success times the probability of failure. Now, another way to look at this is n times the probability, one minus the probability. And hopefully that makes sense, that these are basically the same thing. And some kids like to think of it this way, and other kids like to think of it that way. Okay, so now I could have typed this in my calculator, but this is a lot faster. But once again, if I did, I would get the same exact answer. I hope you could trust me. So how could I check it? So let's review. If I go to menu, and let's say I don't want to do this times this, I can call the first column the number correct. So I'm going to name that uh, in, incorrect. And then this is the probability of correct. So I'm going to call that P correct. Okay. So I can either get none right, one right, two right, three right, four right, five right. And the probability of that should be, hmm, if I didn't want to round, I bet I could do binomial. Hmm, I'm going rogue. I'm going to put the formula in there. Okay, you, did, you wouldn't have to do this, but uh, five tries, 0.25 get none right. Enter. Cool. 
equals. I can program that box, oops, program that box to be binomial PDF. Five trials, 0.25, but get one right. Enter, enter, 0.39. Oh, okay, that's where I got that number. Menu, so I could type it in, or I could put it in that way too. Pretty, pretty darn cool. This calculator is amazing. 0.25, now what's my two right? Oops, I messed that up. Oh, I'm putting them in the wrong location. This is terrible. I wish I knew how to copy paste. Mm. Let me just start over. Equal binomial. You're lucky, you can fast forward the video, but I gotta redo all this again. I'm just gonna do it again. Okay, binomial. Okay, so see how rare that is. Now, we have our probability and our probability distribution in, so we can just go to menu and have it calculate our, st we have one variable stats, and our X list we call number correct, and our frequency is the probability you got that many correct, and hit enter. Okay, oh, 1.25, good. Now, we're gonna verify that this formula works, but it says, using what we've learned in the previous chapter, that's the standard deviation, and the standard deviation is close to one, and does that make sense? Yes, in my mind it does. Okay, so about one. Now, could we have gotten there faster? Let's see if this formula would have also produced this number. So the number of trials is five, the probability of success is 0.25, and the probability of failure is 0.75. So the chances of getting it wrong is one minus the probability. So these are the same formula, okay? So using our handy dandy calculator, again, we take the square root of parentheses, five times 0.25 times 0.75, Bada boom, bada bing. Same exact number, awesome. So mathematicians love a shortcut and that's what we'll get. Now let's figure out, well, what would be the probability of getting at most three? So if I said, oh boy, my car is not very big, bring at most three friends. You can bring three friends, two friends, one friend, and no friends, at most three. So that's this um, button. I don't know if anybody figured it out, but that would be the cumulative frequency. We want, we want to accumulate the probabilities of all this, cumulative. 
So we want a binomial CDF, and the C stands for cumulative. So let's do it. I want a binomial CDF now. Okay, I still have five. I still have my probability of 0.25, but now I have a lower bound and an upper bound. So my lower bound is zero and my upper bound is three. Okay, so let's calculate that using our fancy handy dandy calculator. And if you don't have one, Google the words binomial calculator or binomial CDF calculator and you'll find one. So let's do it. Probability distribution. And there it is right underneath PDF. Ooh geometric. Mm, that's kind of foreshadowing. That's going to be another one. So I hit the wrong button. I just go right on back. Binomial CDF. So number of trials is five. Probability of guessing right is 0.25. Lower bound zero, upper bound three. So that would be getting at most three right or ignoring four and five being right. Let's hit enter. Okay, so that's almost everybody. So that should make sense. I'm just not including getting four or five right, right here. Now, let's check my time. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to make a new video. Check out the next video for the rest of the paper.